Hey Clashers and welcome back to another video and today we want to talk about a new strategy or actually a strategy which kind of got revived to be honest because there is a big change over the last couple of weeks and that is the transition from the clan castles. First off we had a ton of triple ice golem clan castles moving to tunnel 14 having like the all ring base style meta on everything and those ring bases and especially those triple ice golem clan, uh, clan castles were not easy to beat for those pekka smash attacks so you always had to do something fancy like some queen charge before that or like yeah had to somehow take down the triple ice golem because if you're sending a smash into a triple ice golem clan castle that's not a nice thing but now with like shifting away from the triple ice golem clan castle to actually like super minions or maybe lava hounds uh, because those defenses or like those clan castles are actually somehow a threat to to queen charges to i don't know like air attacks things like that we have a huge comeback for the strategy i'm talking about the pekka smash with the hawk riders siege barracks this is incredible powerful i want to show you guys today how you can use it pretty much on any style of base and how you can pretty much smash every single base out there it is incredible powerful now we'll tell you the secrets now in this video. So first off, let's take a look at like a teaser slash diamond shaped base. The setup or like the approach on those bases is exactly the same. The first thing what you're about to do is you want to take down one corner or like one part of the base. A lot of people are always going for multi firm tower compartments. You do not have to do that. Go for something which is not that risky to be baited and go for something which is doable for your warden because you're always starting off with a warden walk. This is something you're always going for with the strategy because you can easily create funnel. You can easily create pathing and that's the key thing. So let's get rid of, of my drawings. Let's use the warden walk. And as soon as we did that, then we can get started um, with the P.E.K.K.A. Um, with, the, with the Siege Barracks and the King. And what you're about to do is you're just spamming everything into the base. That's pretty much it. And then you're just jumping everything through the base. That is kind of the key. And most of the bases, or like pretty much all of the bases to be honest, you can access the town hall with two jumps if you have those well placed. If there's like a wall in between and you are missing like on one wall to jump over, let's just let, uh, let's just smash your Pekka push uh, through one of them, that's no problem whatsoever. And yeah, now we're about to get started with our Pekka at the top side, we're sending in our Queen as well, our Ice Golem is in there as well. As I said in the beginning, we got rid of one Witch. And we got one ice golem in addition because you want to have a heavy push through the core and now we're just pushing everything through the first wall we have a wall breaker for that the next wall like let's say the top compartment would have been closed so we had to invest the wall break over there we could have let our smash just beat through that through that wall then just keep jumping wall break in the king and the siege breaks that's really important and then typically you want to have the hawk riders with your uh, with your royal champion and your king walking around the outside, pushing your, your smash from the core. This time around though, my hawk rides did not really go what I wanted them to do, like didn't really do what I wanted, uh, wanted them to do, and things are splitting off just a little bit. But I just want to highlight how powerful the strategy is, even if things are going wrong. So in this attack, this was by far, by far not really clean executed. But at the same time, we can see we have healers alive, we have the royal champion at the bottom side, we have the queen ability, we have a baby dragon, we have so many troops still alive and tools which we can use for the back end. There should be no problem whatsoever. The queen ability for the back end, for the Tesla form, um, the royal champion is still clearing out things, the Pekka with uh, the, the king actually, with a huge wave of, of skeletons and witches and whatever, is coming from the bottom side. And yeah, my queen is now just surviving, clearing out the, bot the back end. And one thing as well. Those bases which I'm taking right now to showcase out of this are really, really good upgraded. So most likely it's not something which you're going to face anytime soon if you're a normal player or like normal legend player at like the mediocre range of of of, leg of, of trophies. Because I'm a dirty jammer. So um, I have already like it's a pretty much close to being maxed out. So um, those bases are not nothing easy. So now let's take a look at the next base. The next base, the next type of base is going to be ring bases. And something which is super easy is the ring base. This is like one of the easiest type of bases to just wreck with your with your Pegas push. And what you're about to do is you're taking down two corners. The first corner is with the warden walk. As I said, you're always doing a warden walk. It's pretty chill. Like it's not like as hectic, as as intense as like the other variation with like a Yeti blimp where you have to charge something, blimp something, and so on. No, it's pretty chill. It's pretty chill. You just need to make sure that you're placing the warden correctly. Make sure that your warden is not skipping the air defense in the second layer if there's one. 
And that's pretty much it regarding the Warden Walk. Um, on the ring base, as I said, this is self a ring base. It's always the same. Even if this would be like a complete ring base with multiple rings, like not those compartments, it would be still the same approach. It would be exactly the same. You're taking part one corner of the base with your Warden Walk. Another corner, you can just wall break in your, uh, your King and Siege Barracks. And then just keep jumping. Keep jumping, keep jumping, and let's just get into the corner. Exactly what you're trying to avoid in a Queen Charge Pekka Smash, that's exactly what you try to go for in a Pekka Smash like this. And what do I mean by that? Put everything into the core. Push everything into the core. The reason for this is that the Smash overall, like this strategy overall, has so many threats to the base that it is pretty okay if like the Pekka Smash is dying out. Because you have the King on the flank, you have the Hawk Rides on the flank, you have the Royal Champion on the flank. All of this is not happening in the other Pekka Smash. Like in the other Pekka Smash, you have... Yeah, the Yeti Blimp, which you used early on, so that's not a tool for, like, support. You have not the additional P.E.K.K.A., you have not, like, the additional Hawk Riders. And this time around, we have everything. You can see everything pushed into the core. We kept our Queen alive with another Rage to clear out some more things. But at this point, the P.E.K.K.A. Smash mostly already died out, which is totally fine, because now the Hawk Riders, the Royal Champion, are completely taking over and can finish off the base, especially with so many freezes. You have three freezes in this armor composition. Uh, you can bring your invisibility spell if you want to as well, but I feel like if this version of the P.E.K.K.A. Smash triple freeze is better than an invisibility spell. And yeah, I mean, on this one, like, to be honest, I think I won't even use anything anymore because we can swag everything what we want. Um, the freezes, we don't need them. We have the Royal Chain ability if we want to use it. And and that's pretty much it. And you can see how powerful this attack strategy is. Just take down two corners, just push everything in between, and the base is done. And the reason why this is so popular right now is, like I said, the transition of the clan cast. Like, if there's a super minion clan cast in there, you don't care. If there's a super minion, if there's a lava hound clan cast in there, you don't care. You have super wizards. So. I, I don't know, like, it's gone in, like, one rage and one ability or, like, one auto attack of the of the wizards, and that's pretty much it. And now we should take a look at, yet again, another variation out there, another base type, which is kind of popular um, at the moment. It's really popular, actually. And that's, like, those box bases. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the approach which you have to take on those and how you can easily ba uh, beat them. So now this is, like, a pretty classic box base, right? Like, we have those outer corner boxes, we have the town hall compartment kind of big. We have the eagle compartment on the other side. In between in the core, we have like those, those this big compartment with like a lot of smaller compartments in there. And that's pretty much always the case. The two flanking inferno towers, it is always the same setup with like some different approaches to the compartment setups. But overall, like it's always like town hall and, and eagle on the different sides. And what you're about to do, you want to take down one of the corner compartments flanking the tunnel. That is really important. You want to take down the flanking part of the tunnel, which means either on this base, for example, the three o'clock side or like the bottom side. Yet again, you have to be super, super careful how you deploy your warden. So for example, if you would have deployed the warden more towards the left, it might be the case that it's actually skipping the air defense. You want to take that down, otherwise your healers are getting shot at for no reason, basically, and that's not the thing what you would like to have. The next thing, which is special on bases like this, are really important where you're going into a hero, do not, and I repeat that, do not place your P.E.K.K.A. first. We saw that even a couple of pro matches sometimes where they are using that. And this is really coming down to the routine. Warden Walk, then place your Queen. Try to get the healers onto your Queen. On this one, it's not really working because the X bow is like barely in range of my of my, of my my Warden. So that's kind of fortunate. But as soon as the defending, queen, uh, defending hero is down, then you're sending in your Smash. What this does is um, it keeps your P.E.K.K.A. alive and they have to like they're the power to you need in the core and if they're dying early like first it's not looking good now then the warden ability that's the cool thing about this you do not need to the warden ability for the town hall you can just push through use the warden ability nice and early headhunter royal chamber and everything at the top left side and now your outer like outer push which is like the king siege spurlex and then the royal champion office obviously they're nicely taking down the town, uh, taking down the eagle. We're freezing up the town just to make sure that everything is going down quickly. And where's the base? Yeah, this base is completely getting wrecked right now. Yet again, we have a couple of freezes left if we want to use them. Yet again, we have a ton of Pekka left. And this is, I think, by far one of the biggest overkills. And this is how you can easily wreck those box bases. 
And um, yeah, this is pretty much it. Like this base is right now slaying it out there in Legends. If you want to try out a Pekka Smash Army composition, which is not that fancy, not that uh, Queen Torch heavy, just try it out. It's always a Warden Walkers, which is a pretty chill entry. You have a lot of time to think about your plan because you have first off the 30 second planning of like just normal legends and then as soon as you figure out where exactly you want to place the warden you have additional time to plan about your next steps where do you wall break where do you jump how do you place your king siege break how, how do you funnel everything so you have basically like instead of having only 30 seconds of planning you have one minute and 30 seconds of planning because the ward walk can take some time like if you have a ward walk of one minute who cares the army comp like this army is pretty quick and overall it is really really strong like i the reason the recent days i had a lot of defenses against that and it's not nice getting attacked by this attack strategy so if you check out my log air is pretty good to defend but this ground thingy like it is so annoying like the only three stars which you can see right now are both by the strategy and um, the one guy actually is running like a heal spell uh, which you can do if you want to, if you have more power to your uh, to your Hawk Riders. I personally, I think it's not really needed. I think the freezes are totally fine to keep your Hawk Riders alive. But overall, the army link is down below in the description if you want to copy it. Either way, I really hope that you learned something in this video, that you know how to approach different bases, and that you can, yeah, now completely smash those bases in Legends or Clan or wherever you can see them. So, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys back tomorrow for the next one. Until then, see ya, and bye-bye.